Melody Trigger version 2 update. It was about time. Some smaller bug fixes and some really cool new features here. You can actually now import clips on the fly and use different settings here. Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrummer.com. Um, the Melody Trigger is one of my major devices here. I do a lot of music with it myself, like this. Yes, and that's like what you can do. You can use drums or drum pads or um, MIDI controllers, which are sending MIDI notes to advance through steps here. Um, just just a quick week group for people who don't know what it is for. And obviously, if you want to dive in deeper, please start at all the tutorials on version one. Um, there are no features being taken off in the version two. It's just stuff is being added. So um, have a look there if you want to dive deeper. So just um, quick um, showing you so you can actually you can have um, different sequences in here you can step um, through so you can have like different pads playing those um, you can play until next note maybe and you can really quickly set up your controller to um, go reverse or let's quickly do this go random notes here maybe switch on the live velocity let's use a stick so now i can already play a melody quite musical So this is what you can do with the Melody Trigger device here and obviously this can get quite complex if you use more of those to trigger certain things here. So what's new in version 2? So in version 2 you will get some um, smaller updates here which is like you can jump to certain points in your set. So I'm going to use my mouse now, click on jump A, uh, jump B and jump on C. So certain um, step numbers in your sequence. So for example, if you have a really, 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 really long sequence here. So let's refold this. So I have a quite a long sequence in here where I might want to jump to a certain point. So I'm able to do this um, via those jump buttons here. So let's say I want to jump to number step number 16 with this jump B button here so I'm now at 16 and I want to jump to number one I can do this right here so obviously this can be all done via direct MIDI input via pads as well here so I might in some cases some use cases I might want to jump to a certain step but I don't want the step to be triggered straight away. So I can actually turn off those T toggle buttons here. So now I'm jumping to number 16, but only when I trigger um, the next step, it will then trigger from uh, number 16, step number 16. So the same for jump to A is now set to one and the trigger button here, um, the trigger toggle button here is deactivated. So if I click on jump A, I'm now playing from number one. So you get four buttons here. So if you have a really long sequence, um, you can actually um, and you can actually send uh, MIDI notes from dummy clips if you want to, if you want to start at a certain um, point in your sequence and, and map this up and um, sync this up with um, some stuff which is happening in other clips here as well. Okay, so I changed some color stuff here as well. So the whole background color and the whole color of the buttons here will stay like you are seeing this now. So there's not no, it's not going to change um, depending on your on your template colors you, you, you have on the theme in Ableton Live. It will stay on those colors, but I just thought it it, it made more sense to have like one view which really ver works and which is set like this. But you are able to change the color of um, the whole 
um, device, like the editing box here. So if you click on color, you are now getting, depending on your OS and Windows, this will look a little bit different, but you can see, you can select the colors here and you are able to set the colors to your needs here and what works best for you. So if you want yellow, you just click on yellow here or whatever, you know. So this way you have the colors um, and the obvious stuff which you need to maybe look at. Um, you can highlight this in the color you need to. Okay, so importing notes. There is one... Um, a major thingy here because you in version one you 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 always needed to when you wanted to import notes from clips here those need to be on the on the same clip which is now not um you don't need to do this anymore so let's say we have those two um clips here let's quickly play those yeah, on a different clip, uh, maybe advance this a little. So we have those two different note sequences here. We want to import into the melody trigger. So um, let's say on number one, we want to import the first one. We go to sequence edit and we get a pop-up window now where we can um, select the importing here. So I now can select the notes I want to import. Maybe let's say we want to import those notes here. I need to select those notes. I now can click import and you can see on the melody trigger those notes are now being imported. Let's go to sequence number two and let's select those notes here and I can hit import and now we get those four notes in here so now on sequence one i have those notes sequence number two yeah i get those two dif different sequences quickly uh, imported in here so um, that makes sense actually if you have like um, a composition already lined out in Ableton Live and you want to transform this into um, using it and playing it live, now this goes much quicker via um, this pop-up window here. Another really cool feature when we're talking about compositions you already have uh, in Ableton Live and you want to transform those into playing quickly and you want to use the clip logic here of Ableton Live, there is a new feature and this is like a, the major update of uh, the version 2 here which is actually using the clip input instead of the direct edit input. So just to make sure everyone understands, direct edit means you can go in here and you can edit notes, you can import notes in here, you can set pitch, velocity, duration for each note if you want to or you can use live duration and live velocity as well but just um, so everyone knows we got up to 16 slots here for um, different MIDI note sequences we can put in here. So now on version 2 you can actually use a clip input section here which means you can use um, clips from a different track and automatically updating um, the note sequences in here via a clip input. So let's set this up from the beginning. So let's say I have this um, MIDI track here and I'm just gonna record a few things. So I now have this first melody here. Let's call this first. Oops, it's playing now. I don't want this to play. I want to rename this first. Okay, so and let's set the color to something really different here because that's uh, that's going to make a um, difference in the second. Now, a second. Okay, so just some smaller chords thingy here. Let's call this second. And let's change the color here as well, maybe to orange. 
So now I have those clips on here I want to use um, playing live. So let's think about a huge set where you actually say like, well, I have like those clips here I actually want when this scene is playing and those clips are being triggered. Um, I just want to use those clips not for playing, but to send the information over to the melody trigger so that the melody trigger takes this information off this note information of the clips into um, its editing field here and I can play them straight away. So for this, I would need to send those clips over to the melody trigger and I can do this. Let's fold down the instrument here because we don't want to play a sound here now, but we have a second device now which is sending the MIDI notes to the melody trigger. So I need to set a pipe, which is like a virtual cable. So you get like up to 10 different virtual cables you can use here. So per default, that's uh, that is set to clip pipe number one. So I'm sending on clip pipe number one. Um, as soon as a clip is playing here, I'm sending those notes from this clip to the melody trigger. And I need to select the clip pipe here as well. And you can see if I'm now starting this clip here, it shows me the name, the color, and obviously the pitch of um, the different um, the different note pitches here. So let's do some auto folding and maybe change the duration to 16. So we can see this a bit more clearer. So now I get those notes here directly being sent in here. And as soon as I trigger my second clip here you can see the color of the name and obviously the pitch notes are being taken over so this would sound like this uh, let's set the until next note um, duration here and then I play the other one the other clip yeah so the beauty here is I can send, um, I can stay in the logic of scenes and clips in Ableton Live here and I don't need to actually import all the sequences into the direct edit function here. Obviously that's just a different option here, a different technique. If you want to go this way, if you want to stay in the logic, this now goes much quicker. There are a few things which are um, great to know because um, if you, for example, don't want the clip color to change, so now it won't change the clip color, it just will change the name and you are again able to set the clip color you would like here or the color for the um, trigger um, object here. So let's switch that back on and fold down the clip color. So now it's taking the clip colors again because I switched on clip color here so it will automatically update the clip colors again orange blue obvious okay so um there are two more things here so we could actually send a little bit more info from the clips here so for example if the clip is changing we want the um the trigger object, the melody trigger to start from the beginning here again. So for example, if I now play this and I'm now at step three, if I now change um, this to the next clip here, it will now go still like go from step three to step far, four. Yeah, so this is nice, this is musical, this is fine. But if you want the melody trigger, like this, uh, the um, sequence you're triggering always to start from the beginning, you could send um, a reset on clip change. So now, if we're in the melody trigger, we at trigger three, and we're changing the clip to the other one, now it will start at the, at, at at the beginning, it's like a reset um, on uh, 
clip change or on uh, sequence change and we can do the same for the clip start so every time this clip is starting it will now reset so even if I'm here but the clip now is restarting if it's playing at all if you loop this so now you can see it's always it will always trigger a reset um, when it's starting again so this is mm, could be interesting for use cases where you play um, to a click and where you want the sequence to be played from a certain point from the beginning in this case always okay so you could set this up here as well okay so the beauty here is you are actually able to now use one clip to send this to multiple melody triggers here as well so just to give you some ideas on how to use this in a musical way so i open up a new track with a melody trigger set this to clip input and I'm receiving on clip pipe one here as well. And the first one still receives on clip pipe one. And this one is sending on clip pipe one. So obviously this is already receiving now the note information. So I can now set up a uh, different instrument here. Let's take this one. So now I can set this melody trigger up to receive from my SPDSX Pro. So let's quickly set this up. So I'm now playing um, same note here. Yeah. And if I now change to the second clip here, both melody triggers will change to this. Okay, so that's like a new way of how to play things here and how to structure those into your set. If you're excited about the device um, and if you're new to the device, please go to version one, watch the tutorials on version one. And when you get the device, you will get um, a few templates here as well, which um, and, and some tutorials, which will guide you through how, on how to set this up and uh, yes, video links are in the video description here or just head over to ableton.com. Obviously, this is a Max for Life device or those are Max for Life devices, which means you will need Max for Life to make use of that. Max for Life is included in Ableton Life Suite or can be bought as an add-on to standard. If you don't own Ableton Life yet, you can always get a uh, trial, um, a free trial where you can uh, try everything out for 90, 90 days. So, um, or if you have Ableton Live standard and if you're not sure if um, Sweet, if you want to make the investment for Sweet, this is a good way to find out if you, if, if it's worth the investment for you. Yes, you can get this device separately, obviously, and just follow the links or, as I said, head over to ableton.com. Check it out. Have fun. Make great music. Bye-bye.